Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dakota. I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at UW-Madison. And today I want to talk to you about light. Uh, what is light and how does it work? Let's do a simple experiment to help us understand. Behind me you can see that I, I've set up this red laser so that it's shining into this tank of water. Now, we all know that light is the fastest thing in the universe. Nothing can travel faster than light. What's interesting though is that the light emitted from this laser actually slows down as it enters the water. How do we know this? Well, one way we can visualize this is through a phenomenon called refraction. To see this, we need to play around with the angle of the beam. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, tilt the angle of the laser module, like so. And what you'll notice is that light tends to travel in a straight line. The light leaving this laser is traveling in the direction that I set uh, the laser module. But what you'll notice is that the laser passing through the water is traveling at a slightly different angle, a steeper angle than it is traveling on the air side, right? And this difference in angle becomes more pronounced as I change degree of distance. So essentially this makes it appear that the light is bending at the interface between the air and the water. This bending is the essence of refraction. And it turns out that the difference in angle between the light in the water and the light out of the water is directly related to how much the light slows down through the water. Now, this refraction effect is something we all encounter every day. It's the reason why rainbows exist. It's also the reason why uh, contact lenses and eyeglasses are useful for correcting our vision. So it turns out that not all of the light exiting this laser module can actually enter the water. Some of the light is actually reflected at the surface. And you can see that if you look at the laser spot on my hand. This spot is basically from the reflected portion of the beam. What's very interesting though is that there's actually a magic angle where I can make this laser spot disappear. So let me see if I can... I lost it. Here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, continue to increase the tilt angle of the laser module very slowly. do that, you start to see that the spot on my hand becomes dimmer and dimmer. And eventually, that spot disappears altogether. So if you look back at the laser module, this happens to occur at a very specific angle of the laser module. Uh, for water, it happens to occur at an angle of 53 degrees. So this special magic angle is called Brewster's angle. It's the angle where uh, there's essentially no reflection of this laser at the surface, so all of the light cannot enter the water. Now what happens if we increase the angle further than Brewster's angle? If we increase the angle further, which I'm doing now, we see that the reflected beam comes back. Right? And it actually increases in intensity as I increase tilt angle further and further. But for very, very large tilt angles, the reflection of the beam uh, will be maximized. And so the surface of the water at that point will act almost like a perfect mirror. And essentially no light from the laser module will be able to enter the water. And this is actually at the heart of a lot of technologies that we use every day. So it's actually one of the principles behind uh, polarized sunglasses. Now lastly, I want to talk to you about a third phenomenon that gets to the nature of what light is. In addition to being a wave, light also has a polarization. What this means is that 
uh, there's a certain direction that the electric and magnetic fields are waving relative to the direction of the traveling light. In this example, uh, the electric field is waving in this direction, and the magnetic field is waving in and out like this. But we can actually play around with this polarization state by rotating this small component here. This is referred to as a polarizer. And actually, if I rotate this by 90 degrees, I rotate the polarization state of the beam. So now in this case, the electric field is waving side to side, in and out, and the magnetic field is, is waving in this direction. And actually, this changes drastically uh, the reflection and transmission of this laser beam at, this, in, uh, at the surface of the water. So, to illustrate that best, let's go back to our Brewster angle. Here. So, re recall for the other polarization state, there was essentially no reflection at the surface of the water. But now when I hold up my hand, we see a strong reflected beam. So basically for this new polarization state, there is no Brewster angle. Essentially the reflection increases as you increase the tilt angle. And there's, there's nothing, uh, there's no special angle where the reflection disappears. You can see at the Brewster angle, I can essentially turn the reflected beam on and off by changing polarization state. Here it is when we have the most reflection, and here it is when we can turn the reflection completely off. And all I'm doing here is rotating the polarizer to change the polarization state. You'll also notice that the intensity of this laser beam in the water is a lot smaller now. It's a lot harder to see. This is because for this new polarization, you tend to have a much higher reflection than you did for the original polarization. And this is true for all tilt angles. Slowly. You see the difference? So ultimately, polarization is at the heart of a lot of technologies we use every day, like polarized sunglasses. This concept is also at the heart of some experimental techniques I use in my own research, specifically a technique called oxometry, which is an optical technique which allows me to determine the optical properties of certain materials. So let's recap what we learned today. One, light tends to slow down when it passes through matter. Secondly, light is a wave made up of a uh, rapidly changing electric field and a rapidly changing magnetic field. And third, light has a polarization, which indicates the direction that these electric and magnetic fields are waving as light travels along its path. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something. Thank you so much for listening, and go back.